We have 11 play cards remaining and only two terrible characters left, and both of which are in terrible conditions. So get your final guesses into the comment section if you think we can pull this off or not. And to celebrate the end of this series, let's smash the like goal of a thousand likes. Before I head out, I put most of my fuel supplies into bloater gas grenades and start construction on a workshop. Whether we get to use it or not is anyone's guess, but I'd rather see it and not need it than need it and not see it. Then taking over as Hunty Boy, we go to collect Lara's car. Her corpse, however, is nowhere to be seen, so I guess that's a load of supplies we're never getting back. We also only have three play cures left and only two medical supplies, so ideally we really need to avoid any and all plague interactions. And I know what you're thinking, is that even even possible? Probably not, in all honesty. I've also got no toolkits left and this car looks like it could implode at any moment. Shit, I never thought I'd relate to a jeep so much. So I head south to the opposite side of the map and find our first of 11 just outside of Marshall. And as my plan is to use bloater gas, I don't want to accidentally blow up my car, so I park up on the opposite side of the building. I can see the heart from the roof of my car and once I've eliminated the undead in my way, I run in and drop my only flare. Followed by the first of three bloater grenades, which explodes, but seeing as the crowds are now out of control, I have to do a fair bit of dodging before I can drop my second and third grenades. The third grenade does get the kill, but not without issue. That got it. Okay, yeah, we're on fire. And also, absolutely knackered now. But that is how good bloater gas clouds are, chat. That is how good bloater gas is. With the hordes in the building out of control and me being one greedy bastard, I try to lure the zombies away before charging back in and grabbing anything of any sort of value. I can then make a quick getaway and go looking for our next player cart, which thankfully is just across the road. Don't want to be wasting fuel when our resource Forces have dwindled so drastically. Unfortunately, I can't get my spare bloater grenades out of the boot as my pockets are full and the undead were on my arse, so I decide to try and take out this heart without them. I managed to complete the first phase simple enough, then drop a pipe bomb I collected from the previous play cart. But with the cries of a blood feral ringing through my ears, I retreat back to the car's roof. How does buckshot taste, you bastard? I then pop another stim and charge on in, where I complete the second phase very easily, then drop a pipe bomb as I exit. I then loop back around the house and finish off the the play cart just as the hordes are catching up to me. Still being that greedy bastard, I want to loot, so I have to lure all the hordes away from the building. And my car. My very fragile car. Look, these dickheads in there, they're not doing anything. What's that about then? Once they're all outside, I run back in and grab anything of any use. That toolkit will especially come in handy. I then drive myself to the middle of a nearby field, repair the car and sort out my inventory for a bit. We can then make our way to the next heart, which is luckily very close by. And this one's pretty simple. I park up, climb onto the bonnet, lob a firecracker, then three blow the grenades. Okay, that is kind of a plane. I just used three. It didn't do as much damage as I thought it would. So I put more buckshot into another cracker, then try shooting the heart from distance, but get bored and end up running in to finish it off with the caveman club. I grab another M1, a fuel bomb, a stack of energy drinks, then make our way into Marshall. This is the part of the map everyone dreads. The population is higher, the streets are tight and covered in obstacles, and you have to deal with Tressy radioing you asking for help all the time. Tressy, honestly love, take a hint, nobody's coming to rescue you. I decided it would be a good idea to scout as much of the town as possible, so climb up the closest cell tower. And while I'm doing that, it's time for animal fact number 10. Did you know a blue whale's tongue can weigh as much as a car or even a small adult elephant? But that's still only a third of the weight of your mother. After scouting out the entire area, I mark my next target. And I know what you're thinking, surely this bloke has to be able to pull off the bloater gas strat at some point, right? Especially after going through so much effort to make them in the first place. Well, I decide for this one not to try that. You see, with me parking on the outside of the compound, Pound all the hordes are out there, so I should be able to hop on in and get some alone time with a big old sack of meat. I can complete the first phase, then set it on fire with the fuel bomb I collected earlier. I then try to collect some ammo from the boot of my car and almost end up being munched on by a blood feral. In fact, it was so much closer than I care to admit. But then again, everything's a close call when you're naturally a doomed lad. Buckshot defeats another crackhead. I then put 20 M1 rounds into the heart, followed by another 10 rifle rounds. I don't get, I don't know like gun calibers, alright? I'm British. We don't do guns, we do stabby things. Well, the good news is, everyone is outside, so I can now go in, and I should be able to kill it before the zombies catch me. In theory, at least. On this occasion, theory worked out great, and I'm rewarded handsomely for my efforts. That's four hearts down, a medikit sorted me right out, and three stimulants to keep me going for longer. And I still haven't used up a single play cure. On to the next one, I complete the first phase with a heavy weapon, and even though I can hear the sound of a blood feral running about, I decide to try and finish the heart with a blow the gas. But guess 
this one, it obviously didn't work. For some reason, the bloater gas didn't get ignited by the firecracker, so I'm forced to retreat. And the crowds are actually so bad, I do a full retreat. In the car and everything. But only to the next play cart, which is on the street adjacent. I get a good few hits on it, but can't complete the phase before the hordes get out of control. And at that point, it's time to dip. Then using my second M1, I put another 10 shots into it, before swapping that out for the Prepper's 1022. And while that'll be terrible for the play carts, it's perfectly effective against the deadheads. So it looks like I'm gonna have to run back in and do some more heavy hitting, which I suppose you could say works out quite well. I complete the phase with the heavy weapon, then finally pull off the bloater gas strat, which finishes off the heart, so either I've miscounted the phases or it glitched out, but either way, I'm taking that as a victory. Back to the other one, we'll come back for these goodies later. Also, I can repair this now, because they don't even know where I am. Am I about to say that and they're about to hop over the wall? That would be the biggest take the piss ever, wouldn't it? Well, actually, the biggest piss take was your attempt to escape. One on the door, one on the bonnet, completely removing all the work of that toolkit. Oh, great, well, it's smoking again, and I've lost the door. I'm in a worse condition than I was originally. Moving on from my terrible car maintenance and ignoring the fact I've accidentally gassed myself, I go back to the other play guard and complete the first phase. But I then get chased out by a blood feral, and one thing leads to another, and I get trapped on a caravan with two blood ferals beneath me. Oh, look, there's three of them. Well, I'm assuming there's three. There's never just two. I nail the first with a lucky shot, but waste way too much ammo trying to take care of the second. So for the first time in my life, I put down the controller and swap to keyboard and mouse. And you'll never guess what, it actually works out. It worked! It, what can I say? It fucking worked! It worked! Oh, I might keep on a mouse just for the headshot. Oh my god. I finally understand why I always got rinsed by a bunch of virgins in Call of Duty. It certainly wasn't a skill issue, the bastards had better equipment. I go back to batter in the heart, but Humpty Boy chooses this moment to become sleepy. Go going, bro, right in the heart of battle. But I refuse to let the bastard rest until the heart is defeated. I start by heading back to the last heart we killed. I collect all of his decent loot. And you might be thinking, why the bloody hell did you grab that medical rucksack? You're heavy enough and bloody shattered, man. Well, no Spoilers, but all I'm gonna say is a bloody good thing I did. I can drop it off into the back of the car, then run in and finish off the heart. Unfortunately, my pockets were full, which is a shame as that is some tasty looking loot. And seeing as there's been corpses in better condition than Hunty Boy currently is, I decide now would be a good time to swap the fiddler. However, I don't want to drive all the way back to base and drive all the way back here as that's a waste of fuel. So I'm gonna turn this fast food restaurant into an outpost. But that turns out to be easier said than done. First, I've got to abandon an existing outpost as my slots are full. I then enter the swine and bovine and sweep the two rooms. Unfortunately, I can't clear the two zombies inside given my stamina situation. I do like I have a million times before and head back to the car to catch my breath. Once all the zombies are out of there, I run in, make it outpost, run. Get back here, set landmines. Hope car doesn't blow up in the process. Oh look, it's a clown zombie! <laughs> now he's missing a face. Unfortunately, my plan doesn't work as I guess the zombies were too close to the building or something. So instead, clutching my chest, I limp across the road to the petrol station and climb to the safety of a horse box. I then decide to try and claim the petrol station thinking it'll be easier as there's only one room, but no luck. So instead I try limping further away and circling back round to the swine and bovine, and this time it actually works. I can claim the outpost, then set the- No! I've got enough parts! And unfortunately I didn't have time to scrap anything as the undead was too close to my rectum. So it looks like I'm going back to luring dickheads away, before running back inside and panic scrapping from my supply locker. And from there, well, you can probably figure out what I did. Ah! Uh... Uh, what can I say, ladies and gentlemen? I am a tactical genius. <laughs> Then once I've dropped everything into the supply locker, I swap to Fiddler. Then after marking out our next target, we make a move. But on my way past, I notice an enclave and decide to pay them a visit. Maybe they'll have a toolkit for sale. Unfortunately, they do not. But they do have flares for sale. Well, they're definitely going to be so much better than the firecrackers I've been using so far. But on the fairly short drive over to the next heart, I completely forget about them and just charge in and start battering. Oh, you twat. That's the first time I've been bitten all stream. I managed to shake them off and drop a pipe bomb before escaping. I circle around the house before going full auto and escaping for a second time. So I again circle around the house before nearly putting the remainder of my mag in. But at least this time we completed the phase. I then attempt to lure all the hordes outside, but unfortunately only managed to get a few hits in before they catch back up to me. But once again, before I escape, I drop my final pipe bomb. But at least all the zombies are now going to be coming towards me because they'll definitely know where I am now. You can try and justify it any way you want, pal, but let's face it, you're struggling. I do manage to head back inside and finally kill the thing, but unfortunately don't get a chance to loot seeing as the former owners are being a bit needy. So I tried to lure the bell end through the house next door, but as I'm creeping back, my aftershave alerts are cracked and I'm forced to leg it. I kill it from the roof of the car, but I can also hear a juggernaut, so I need to get out of here sooner rather than later. I do get enough time to do a really sloppy loot job, but to be honest with you, it really wasn't worth it. And just when you think things couldn't get any worse... Oh god, juggernaut's right next to the car. Please don't hit the car. 
Whoo, baby. Come on, Juggy boy. But to be honest, right now, the Juggernaut is the least of your concerns. Oh, shit. That was, that was, yeah, rookie mistake, rookie mistake. Now we have two play cures remaining. Regain the stamp, get the car. I just get the fuck out. And that is exactly what I do. And at this point, I realized it was a player card that was missing right next to the enclave I was at earlier. So I make my way back there, seeing as if I get overwhelmed, I can retreat back to the strangers and they can tidy up the crowds for me. And any and all crackheads. Luckily, I was packing enough snacks to make the trip across the street. And gratefully, these bastards are armed to the teeth. And no matter what I did, the crackhead only had eyes for me. Well, I'm honored and disgusted in equal measure. And once they have dealt with the pharaoh and the hordes it attracted, I can make my start on the high. And it's at this point I remember I've got flares on load of gas. Although the first flare I drop completely misses and goes into the bathroom. Which isn't ideal as it's too far away to ignite the preceding bloater gas, so I have to drop my second flare in order to get it to blow. I also toss my second bloater gas just as a burning feral tackles me, so now I've got to escape pretty quick. But I have no idea whether or not that was successful or not. I lure everything pursuing me back towards my do BFFs, and guess what? A juggernaut has decided to make an appearance. I just rely on this enclave while I stay warm next to this this fire. But it's fair to say that decision didn't go too well for one of its members. I mean, it's okay, they still got two. So I figure it's probably time to show I'm a worthy member of the team. Oh, look at that, I got the ki I got the killer blow. Oh my god. Ah, yes, that was entirely fiddler. We experienced zero outside help whatsoever. A few more swings of my double bit axe ends the heart, and we only have three more remaining on the entire map. Who'd have guessed we'd have got so far with such terrible characters? Fiddler is decrepit and nobody likes him, while Hunty Boy is doomed and has no work in kneecaps. These are people that would struggle to survive in the current day, never mind the zombie apocalypse, certainly forget about lethal zone. For now, I decide to head back to base. I can risk the fuel to remove this infection at the infirmary as well as hopefully sort out this damage. I've also got loads of rucksacks taking up space in the boot, so it'd be good to drop them off. If only I could foresee what damage this would cause. As I get back to base, I notice a horde wandering past, and at its core is a feral and a juggernaut. A combination forged in hell itself. I'm able to deal with a feral simple enough, but seen as none of my weapons have suppressors on we're in deep shit now. I start to deal with the plague zombies, but Fiddler has chosen the worst time ever to start to get sleepy. The Juggernaut has also breached our back doors and is now absolutely dominating Hunty Boy. So much so, he ends up with Blood Plague. At this point, all I can do is run to try and save him. If I get far enough away, the attack should cease and then I'll return and kill the Jug with my car. Once I'm a safe distance away, I check him into the infirmary, which should keep him alive for now. But in order to pull off this plan, I'm gonna need a toolkit to fix up this car. But I've already looted this big daddy all Auto shop. The only thing I hadn't touched was this rucksack of jerry cans. So in my desperation, I radio for a new vehicle delivery, which ironically comes with a toolkit. So now it's time to hit a fat fucker with my pickup. Uh, again. Unfortunately, the big bastard refuses to leave my home. So I guess it's time for Fiddler to earn his hero status. For the briefest of moments, I suspect it's given up as it takes hit after hit from my heavy axe. But it must have been daydreaming. It charges at me and I narrowly avoid a certain death. But in my moment of desperation, Hunty Boy rises from his deathbed and decides this juggernaut has overstayed his welcome. But that doesn't go too well for the lad. No! No! Oh no! Oh no! This has just become a solo survivor run! We're gonna need a serious amount of RIPs in the comment section. Nobody deserves to die like that, especially Michael Hunt. Rest well, my friend. I hope Valhalla is kind to you. In his grieving state, Fiddler retreats, but only as far as the local Tartan Mart. You see, one of the mad scientists we met earlier is asking for help, and Fiddler is feeling especially manipulative. Aye, sure, Isabella, no problem, I'll help you with your Cleo problems. He then necks a coffee to remove his fatigue, and uses up the last of our meds to fix up his injuries and infections. Then, while silently declaring himself as the supreme leader, he heads back into Marshall, ready to use and abuse a mad scientist. He single-handedly kills the next play cart while Isby acts as a distraction. But he has only one goal in mind. End the blood plague that has claimed so many of his friends before him. Fueled on adrenaline and caffeine, he knows only two more hearts stand between him and salvation. With Isby once again acting as a distraction, he takes on the penultimate heart. And even though his axe breaks and he's forced to use up his last but one player cure, ultimately this heart falls like the 28 before it. So as we make our way to the final play cart, he has a quiet moment of contemplation. As much as he misses all of the friends that have fallen on this quest, he's enjoying the 
power of leadership even more. And his ability to corrupt even the maddest of scientists is only fueling him more. Fiddler takes down the final play cart entirely from the roof of the car, mainly seen as his lungs have completely collapsed. And then he just straight up abandons his bee to the plague ferals. As much as he needs people to fuel his power trip, a mad scientist is obviously too smart for this decrepit boy. So he heads back to base to be alone with his thoughts. To continue and build himself a legacy, he can't do so alone. So he messages some newbies over the radio, and even though none of them are showing signs of negative traits, he recruits the one with the funniest name. Welcome to the team, Goose Egg. And unfortunately, at the time of recording, thanks to update 36, the community editor is no longer working. So Goose Egg shall be remaining a not-so-negative Nelly. But that's alright, she can just sit there while Fiddler builds ourselves a level 2 fighting gym. After that's built, Fiddler shows why billionaire CEOs are always correct, as that full day of construction has completely removed his fatigue. Once again, proving once and for all you should constantly be working and never take breaks. Shout out to Corporate America for sponsoring this video. With that, Fiddler proves he's a beast by slaying some of the undead. But it seems the word of our victory has spread far and wide, as we have a visitor to our home and he's claiming his former friends are planning on overthrowing us. He agrees to take me to their base, but I have come prepared for battle. Three bottles of blood of gas should do the job nicely. Oh shit! No! Fiddler! Get up, son! Thankfully, Fiddler can shake off gunshots with ease. No! No! Fiddler! Gratefully, they don't shoot at me while I'm on the floor begging for forgiveness. A decision they won't live to regret, seeing as I then continue to break the Geneva Convention. Okay, yes, I do have to shake off another gunshot, but at least I'm not a victim of chemical warfare. With them taken care of, Edwin is like, I told you my intel was good, any chance I can join the team. And to be fair to him, he is showing signs of a negative trait. But once a traitor, always a traitor. We have no room in our organ organization for knobheads. But now I'm gonna have to check up on the rest of the town to make sure they don't think I'm a massive bell end. Things don't get off to a great start when my first stop there's nobody home, but I do find a propaganda flyer being like, is your town being run by a tyrant? Which seems a bit harsh to me, the only people I've killed this entire playthrough was knobheads trying to overthrow me. With the exception of the grocery raiders of course. But that wasn't even Fiddler, that was Nate and he's been dead for at least a day and a half at this point. Oh shit, could the coalition have been mates with the grocery raiders? We could be in for a bit of a fight here. I pay a visit to another enclave, and after waiting five minutes for them to take care of the massive zombie horde I attracted thanks to my loud engine, they're like, hang on, I seen you gas out our neighbours just last night. But well, what do you think I'm gonna do to you, dickheads? Have a bit of that, you pricks. Admittedly, I do shoot the final woman, as I figured that would be the politest way of dealing with it. The third enclave I visit have all become members of the undead, and the fourth didn't even give me a chance to start the conversation. But it is nice they gathered in one neat pile for me. These bloater gas grenades don't grow on trees, you know. Fiddler is forced to shoot the one that's escaped the gas cloud, but for the other two he decides to save the ammunition and let the gas filter through their lungs. And after brutally murdering nine people in under 12 hours, Fiddler has started to enjoy the suffering. He now has a thirst for blood, so I meet up with some corrupt red talon dude to arm up for the up and coming war, then allow that thirst of blood to sacrifice Goose Head to the mighty Lord Juggernaut. I then travel to one of the coalition's outposts, one exit, one entrance. I know what I gotta do. I toss a couple of bloater gas bombs through the window, which kills all but one. Nor but is the final man standing, after witnessing my war crimes he tells me where the rest of the coalition is and begs for his life. But Fiddler is no longer thirsty for blood, he's fully dehydrated. So as we make our way to finish the coalition once and for all, Fiddler can't help but feel a sense of accomplishment. Before the fall of society he was downtrodden. People thought of him as vermin, he was decrepit and most people wouldn't piss on him if he was on fire. But now look at him, he's found his place at the top of the food chain and nobody can touch him. He is the true warlord of Trump. Valley. So before we commit more war crimes against the coalition, I leave you with one final animal fact. Animal fact number 11. Did you know the sperm whale are the world's largest predator? They can be up to 20 meters long and weigh up to 80 tons. An 80 ton sperm? Christ, I'd hate to see the sack that came out of. Fiddler arrives at the coalition's final base, a grave site that shall remain untouched, as a sign to future rebels that you cannot question his authority and walk away unscathed. Come on, you cowards, face me. He opens the door and tosses a blow the grenade inside, but unfortunately he comes up short and he's only got one more remaining. So he pulls off a peak shot to down one, but unfortunately gets clipped by his friend. But it's not even a problem, being a massive pillhead fiddler came prepared. The third creeps around the side of the building and I'm ready to unload on his ass. And that is the moment everything comes crumbling down. No! No! Fiddler! 
Oh, fuck. Fiddler falls at the final hurdle. So close to immortality, yet so far away from victory. Hope all of you watching take this as a lesson throughout your lives. Bad things will eventually happen to terrible people. In the end, perhaps all it'll take is a little coalition. We'll talk about an anticlimactic ending.